Otherwise, a bliss, if you explain a bliss in any way, that he be independent from Allah, that's wrong. It's wrong. Iblis is an agent of Allah. Iblis sinned, made a very big mistake. I won't go into the story now. He asked for a respite, a time period, to show he can mislead people, misguide people. Allah granted it to him. Allah granted it to him. Then Allah suddenly in the Quran, it's a Quranic discussion. Suddenly Allah comes with these imperatives. Istafziz. It's an imperative. Amr. It's an order. Inside. Sharik home. Enter partnership with them. Sharik home. It's an imperative. Allah is ordering him. He's an agent of Allah. Wa id home. Promise them. Things that aren't real and so on and so forth. These are imperatives. Not that Iblis is independent and he does everything outside Allah's jurisdiction. Of course that's not the case. That's a Zoroastrian notion. It's wrong. He's an agent of Allah and actually not only is he an agent of Allah if he's an agent of Allah first the question is Agent, agent in what? Because Allah's attributes manifest since pre-eternity to post-eternity. All his action, all his attributes. When he wants to manifest, for example, knowledge from the nursery to university, the agent is called Jibra'il. From the nursery to university and thereafter, it's all Jibra'ili forces in play. When he wants to, whenever there's sign of life being taken, even when the beard is becoming white, or when someone dies, or when a plant rots, these are all Israeli forces in play. That the agent is now this angel called Israel, and those under Israel. Many angels work under the jurisdiction of angels. These are all forces of Allah in play. Now, one of Allah's attributes is model, the misguider. Allah is the misguider. It's in the Quran. Yodhillu man yasha. He misguides those who want it, who want misguidance. The pronoun in yasha goes back to the relative noun man. Don't, don't revert it to Allah. That's on a par with Arabic syntax. But even if you did, it can be justified or explained. Allah misguides those who want it. You wanted misguidance. It's you know cause and effect. You wanted misguidance. Allah misguided you, but you did something. Now, when Allah misguides you, who are His forces in play? Who is His agent? Enter Iblis. But Iblis works under the jurisdiction of Allah, not outside. So Iblis now manifests Allah's attribute of the misguider. But you did something wrong. What did you do wrong? You forgot Allah. During a 24 hour day, to the degree, <coughs> to the degree you forgot Allah during a 24 hour period, in proportion to that degree, Iblisi forces will come into play and temptations will come your way to the degree that you forgot Allah. Not that Iblis will come to you no matter what. If you, if you do everything right, why should he come towards you? To misguide you. That's not a wrong, that's not a correct understanding. Tests, that's another issue. But why should Iblis come to you know, tempt you in the wrong way when you've done nothing wrong? 
So that's one issue. And actually, in this agency of Iblis, he is masoom in this duty that he's been given from Allah. He won't err. Look, he's masoom in his duty of misguiding people. In the same way that Jibra'il, Israel, Israfil, Mikail or Ma'soom in exercising and executing their divine duty.